and welcome to the Abercrombie and Fitch third quarter 2013 earnings results conference call. Today's call is being recorded. If you have a question at any time during today's conference, you may signal us by pressing star 1 on your touchtone phone. We will open the call to take your questions at the end of the presentation. We ask that you limit yourself to one question during the question and answer session today. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Brian Logan. Mr. Logan, please go ahead. Good morning, and welcome to our third quarter earnings call. Earlier today, we released our third quarter sales and earnings, income statement, balance sheet, store opening and closing summary, and an updated financial history. Please feel free to reference these materials available on our website. Also available on our website is an investor presentation, which we will be referring to in our comments this morning. Today's earnings call is being recorded, and the replay may be accessed through the Internet at Abercrombie.com under the Investor section. The call is scheduled for one hour. Joining me today are Mike Jeffries and Jonathan Ramsden. Before we begin, I remind you that any forward-looking statements we may make today are subject to the safe harbor statement found in our SEC filings. In addition, due to the 53rd week in the fiscal 2012 retail year, Third quarter comparable sales are compared to the 13-week period ended November 3, 2012. Also, as a reminder, the company changed its method of accounting for inventory to the cost me method effective February 2, 2013. As a result, prior figures have been restated to reflect the change in accounting method. We will now begin the call with a few remarks from Mike, followed by a review of the financial performance fourth quarter from Jonathan and me. After our prepared comments, we will be available to take your questions for as long as time permits. With that, I will turn the call over to Mike. Good morning, everyone. Our results for the third quarter were disappointing, driven by continued weakness in top-line performance. The weak sales trend that began in July continued through the quarter. While the sales trend improved in October, this was largely related to a step up in promotional activity and the anniversary of certain events such as Sandy. We are feeling the effects of a number of broad trends, but we can and need to do better in driving the top line of the business. In the near term, we are prepared for conditions to remain difficult in the fourth quarter and intend to manage the business accordingly. Despite the challenging retail environment for young apparel, we are pleased by the continued growth of our direct-to-consumer business, which was up in all regions in the third quarter, with particularly strong growth in Asia. Our fast-growing and highly profitable international direct-to-consumer business is demonstrating the benefits of investments we have made over the past few years. We are also pleased by the progress we are making on the ground in Asia. Our six Hollister stores in mainland China are now generating four wall margins similar to that of our European stores. Comp store sales growth in China is up around 40% year to date, and our newest store in San Latun opens strongly and continues to perform well. In addition, we had a robust response to the opening of our first Hollister store in Japan at Lalaport, Yokohama. It was one of our best-performing Hollister store opening weekends in our brand's history. Since its opening in September, this store's volume is tracking to be a top 10 Hollister store. With this momentum, we are excited to open our second Hollister store next month at Lalaport Shin Misato in Tokyo. From a merchandise standpoint, we're also pleased with our performance during the quarter in outerwear, which comped up around 10% across genders and brands. We continue to see high potential in this category. <coughs> our underwear and intimates business also did well for the quarter, including the successful test of selling Gilly Hicks product within Hollister stores. And our denim business for the quarter was solid, particularly on the male side. However, our female top business remained weak. 
we see this as an extremely important area of opportunity to turn around our overall sales performance. Coming back to our long-range strategic review, in our analyst meeting earlier this month, we outlined initiatives that we will undertake in the coming months. Coming out of the meeting, I know that many of you wanted to know more about how we are prioritizing these initiatives and other actions and what will have the most impact in driving improvement and top-line growth. From my perspective, our priorities lie in the following four areas. First, making female tops better. Many of the initiatives we spoke to will help with this, but I believe that our evolution to testing close to 100% of our assortment, shortening our lead times, and increased style differentiation will be the most significant. Second, increasing brand engagement through enhanced marketing initiatives and campaigns. In our analyst meeting, we spoke about having national campaigns in place for back to school next year, building on smaller scale initiatives we will be doing in the meantime. Third, completing the restructuring of our cost base. Prior to our next earnings call in February, we expect to have reached final conclusions on the scale of remaining opportunities beyond what we have already announced. Fourth, ensuring we are properly organized to execute against our strategic plan. We continue to work on this and expect to reach a conclusion in the near future. I am confident that we will make progress on each of these priorities in the coming court and establish a firm foundation for improving our operating performance. We have iconic brands with global appeal and a clearly defined aesthetic. Our brands have a strong reputation for quality, heritage, and timeless fashion, and we believe the best path to growth and shareholder value creation is to leverage those strengths. With this in mind, it is of course necessary for us to adapt to changing markets and consumer dynamics and we intend to do so while staying true to our brand heritage. With that, I'll hand the call over to Jonathan, but we'll be available to take your questions later in the call. Thanks, Mike, and good morning, everyone. For the quarter, the company's net sales were $1.033 billion, down 12% to last year. Total U.S. sales, including DTC, were down 18%. International sales, including DTC, were up 2% and total DTC sales, including shipping and handling, were up 10%. Including direct-to-consumer, comp sales were down 14%, with the U.S. down 14%, and international down 15%. Within the quarter, comparable sales were weakest in the months of August and September. The gross margin rate for the quarter was 130 basis points lower than last year. This included a calendar shift benefit which was largely offset by $5.3 million of inventory write-downs related to Gilly Hicks. The lower-than-anticipated gross margin rate was primarily the result of a step-up in promotional activity, mainly in October. On an adjusted non-GAAP basis, operating expense for the quarter was $591 million versus $619 million last year. This excludes pre-tax charges of $96 million which are detailed on page three of our investor presentation. Other operating income for the quarter included a $6 million benefit associated with insurance recoveries. Overall, expenses for the quarter came in significantly below forecast as we flexed down expenses in reaction to the lower sales trend. In addition, we were able to realize a small amount of savings related to the profit improvement initiative during the quarter. On an adjusted non-GAAP basis, operating income for the quarter was $60 million versus $133 million a year ago. Operating margin on an adjusted basis decreased 550 basis points, resulting from gross margin erosion coupled with expense deleverage. The tax rate for the quarter, excluding the effect of charges, was 31.1%, 
and included a benefit of $4.9 million related to certain discrete tax items. On a full year basis, we expect the tax rate to be in the mid-30s on an adjusted non-GAAP basis. <clears throat> for the quarter, the company reported adjusted non-GAAP earnings per diluted share for $0.52 cents versus a dollar and two cents last year. Results for the quarter included six cents of tax benefits related to the discrete tax matters I just referenced. Turning to the balance sheet, we ended the quarter with approximately $258 million in cash and equivalents and borrowings under the term loan of approximately $139 million. Cash was below our target minimum holding of $350 million, but we expect to be back well above that level by year end. We ended the quarter with total inventory at cost up 22% versus a year ago, with in transit contributing to the increase. While overall inventory is expected to be up at the end of the year, we expect to end with appropriate levels of full carryover inventory versus the low levels last year. Two weeks ago, we announced that we have decided to focus the future development of Gilly Hicks through Hollister stores and direct-to-consumer channels, and we will be closing our standalone Gilly Hicks stores. Excluding charges associated with the restructuring, we incurred an operating loss of $12 million related to Gilly Hicks operations in the third quarter. The operating loss included $5.3 million in inventory write-down charges that I mentioned earlier. With regard to our outlook for the full year, based on a projected low double-digit decrease in comparable sales for the fourth quarter, we are projecting full-year adjusted non-GAAP diluted EPS to be in the range of $1.40 to $1.50. This projection also assumes significant gross margin rate erosion in the fourth quarter, including an unfavorable effect from the calendar shift. We expect gross margin rate for the full year to be approximately flat to last year. The projection for the full year does not include charges related to our restructuring actions for Gilly Hicks, other impairment and store closure charges, charges related to the implementation of our profit improvement initiative, or the effect of any additional share of purchases. Also, due to the extra week in last year's fiscal calendar and the resulting calendar shift, the prior year comparable 13-week period ended February 2, 2013, would have had approximately $82 million less in sales versus the actual reported 14-week period ended February 2, 2013. This will adversely affect fourth quarter sales and earnings on a relative basis. We continue to expect capital expenditures of around $200 million for the year and pre-opening costs of around $25 million. With regard to the rest of our real estate plans for 2013, we intend to open approximately 20 international wholesale chain stores in total for the year as well as a small number of international and U.S. outlet stores. To date, in 2013, we have opened 13 international Hollister chain store locations. We continue to expect to close approximately 50 stores in the U.S. in 2013 through natural lease expirations, primarily at the end of the year. During the quarter, we opened an ANF flagship store in Seoul. The planned opening of an ANF flagship store in Shanghai is expected in the spring of 2014. With regard to the ongoing profit improvement initiative, we expect to realize a somewhat greater amount of savings during the fourth quarter than the small amount we recognized during the third quarter. As we stated during our analyst meeting two weeks ago, we expect to realize net incremental annual savings of at least $100 million beyond what is realized this year and have a close to final figure of expected cost savings by our February earnings call. For incremental savings we identify beyond the $100 million we continue to expect to reinvest a portion of those savings into funding marketing efforts tied to our strategic plan. Going forward, our financial focus remains on driving operating margin improvement through execution of our strategic plan and maintaining a disciplined approach to capital allocation. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Brian to provide some more details on our results for the quarter. 